All right, it's early in the morning, about 8.20, and we are going to today turn that 22 and a half inch Weber kettle, not the Smoky Joe, not our friend the pig, but that kettle into a two lever, two level smoker. And we're gonna do that by unboxing and taking a first look at the Smoke EZ. It arrived in a well-packed box. They did a nice job of packing the Smoke EZ. Let's take a look here. As you can see, they did a good job of packing. Plenty of packing material around. Thankfully, it's not peanuts. I hate packing peanuts. But everything looks clean and undamaged. Now, I will say that this Weber grate does not actually come with the Smoke EZ. It does not come with grates. So I ordered a second grate. So I have two levels on the smoker once we get it going. There's the checklist telling you what it includes. Grill rack, fire ring, hardware kit, stainless steel bowl, assembly instructions, the person that inspected it, the date. Nice job. By the way, we ordered this from Firecraft down in Pennsylvania and it arrived very quickly. It was in stock. Once again, a nice packing job. There's the hardware kit. Looks like those are probably the grill racks for the inside. Nuts, bolts. A nice size water bowl. I do use a water pan in the kettle when I'm smoking. I have smoked with it before and with the kettle and using the minion method I can get about 250 degrees for 8 to 10 hours depending on the fuel load and, and the temperature. So we'll see how this works. Alright, there is the cut charcoal ring. We'll see that in action later on. This is one of the coolest things. This is a dome rack that's going to sit underneath the dome of the kettle. It'll sit like this and we'll be able to hang fish, hang sausages, long cuts from that, or they say invert and use it as a basket for hams or turkeys or whatnot. It'll be interesting to see how that works out. And of course, the smoke chamber itself is in here. There it is. All right. Now, since I know all y'all know how to use basic hand tools, 
If you weren't smart guys, you wouldn't be watching this. We're going to go ahead and put this together and show you what it looks like. We'll be back. Okay, it's been about 15 minutes. All the fasteners are fastened on the Smoke Easy. Let's start putting everything together, taking a look at what we've got here. This is what I was using for the water pan and a quasi charcoal ring. 12 inch pan leaves the right amount of room to run a minion or snake method of charcoal around to get the length of burn that we need. This is the Smoke EZ ring. It's virtually the same size as I was using. It tells me that what I'm going to get is the same amount of burn time or perhaps even a little bit more burn time. So this will just set off to the side for the moment. This the pan looks just like a basic restaurant mixing bowl pan. This is what's going to be used as the water pan. Now it looks like this would clear the old grate just barely, but we're not going to be using, of course, the old grate level. So for those of you who may want to know, what we're looking at is just under a 12 inch ring and that's going to give us about four and a half inches between four and a half and five inches per side and about a five inch depth we could put more charcoal in here than we would use in a couple of burns let me make a little adjustment to the camera and we'll start stacking these things together. As I said, the assembly went really well. It took about 15 minutes. All the parts were there. Everything that was needed. No questions asked. So buddy, if you're watching this, believe it or not, it was your ad in the bull sheet from the Kansas City Barbecue Society that caused me to want one of these to begin with. Alright, let's remember it's an 11 year old kettle and a brand new Smokey Z. fit is basically perfect. Nice and tight. Doesn't look top heavy. It looks good. One thing that I will mention, kind of a pleasant surprise. If you look there above those two screws you see an additional hole looks like a hole for a thermometer probe. Uh, the only thing that would have been nice would have been to include a grommet for that. I use remote thermometers. They're the less expensive ones. I don't have a grommet for that hole. We'll probably just have to figure out a way to close that up later on. All right, let's go ahead and get a grate in here, see what we've got. Okay, it's the hinged grate from the Weber.
that sets down nicely inside. The fit, of course, is perfect. Question that I had was how far are we between the grate and the fire, roughly. And we are six inches above the top of the fire ring, which means with a basic load of charcoal that I would put in here, this grate's probably about eight inches above the fire. I don't think we're going to have any problems with direct fire or hot spots, especially with the, uh, the water in there. I'm sure that we're going to be able to handle the temperature control. be interesting. I can control the Weber just fine. We're going to find out how this works. Ten inches. That's the space between the bottom grate and the top grate. Now I know that on some of the forums, uh, some of the questions that Buddy has answered was talking about taking um, some kind of a drawer, uh, drawer rail holder and putting it in one of these holes and raising the grate up if you so desired. We'll see what happens. Uh, the, the plan today is to fire this thing with a pork butt down here and we're going to, later on we'll do some chicken up here. We may start the pork butt up here but what we're going to do is to put a temperature probe in at grate level here, at grate level here and we'll take some, uh, some pictures or some video of the thing once it's fired and we'll see what the temperatures are doing. Uh, let's go ahead and, and we'll grab the top grate and take a look at how this thing looks as it goes along. Since the kettle came originally with the hinged grate, I didn't feel the need for a hinged grate as the second grate. So this is just a OEM kettle, 22 and a half inch grate. We now have two levels. Looking good so far. Pull back a little bit. This is the grate that I was showing you earlier. Well, not really great. It's the dome hanging rack. As you can see, you'd be able to uh, definitely use some meat hooks, hang some stuff on here, remove this grate. You've got a bunch of room between here and the fire. In fact, when you look at this, figure your fire's about here. Your top rack is about 16 inches above your fuel source. Once again, we're going to see how that works. Now I'm not sure how that sizes out versus a Smoky Mountain, uh, the distance between the top rack and your fire. I think that this will work out fine. It gives me the versatility of removing this, having the standard kettle, and just being able to, to do two things with a, a limited amount of space. So let's put the lid on.
so far. So good. Like I said, we saw this in the bull sheet, which is the newspaper of the Kansas City Barbecue Society, of which both my wife and I are members. Uh, this arrived about a week ago from Firecraft. I had to wait a week to be able to do this because I wanted to do this unboxing first look video. And we were actually last weekend judging the Oinktoberfest barbecue contest, uh, which made me even more want to get some some fire and some smoke going. So that the today's goal is pork butt and chicken, uh, chicken drums, and some breasts. We're going to do that over some, uh, we're going to use Kingsford briquettes and probably a little bit of lump. We're going to do that over apple. If you have a question or a comment, we'll leave that. You know where. Those go down there. If you like this video, that's over there. Boogie and I will be back with a part two. We'll show you how this thing runs as it's actually moving. Thanks for watching. All right, we're back with our first look at the Smoky EZ. I know that most all of you know this is the Minion or the Snake Method. We have a line of, in this case, Kingsford briquettes. That's running around here. It's so about three or four inches deep. Applewood, and what we're going to do is fire a couple of Weber starters. We're going to allow that to sit and catch. We'll be filling the bowl with water. And closing this whole thing up, seeing what the temperatures look like, and put some meat on here. Let's do some barbecue. Okay, so we're going to end up losing the light. So, probably shoot the final segment now. There'll be a little video probably of the about being done. It's about 10 degrees away from being done. We're oh, 8 hours and 20 minutes into the cook. We're still maintaining temperature. Uh, correction from earlier. Yes, the lid hanger will work. I was actually hitting against one of the kettle handles with the lid. So I got that figured out later on. Um, I did have to add fuel couple of times to charcoal load and I think that's because of not taking real good time with putting the briquettes in. They really need to be laid in properly in nice neat layers. I didn't do that. My fault. Uh, the chicken came out really well uh, from the brine. It, they were succulent to the point that the grill actually left bar marks pressed into the meat, just from the weight of the meat, it was so moist, it was pressing down into the grill. So that was eight pounds of chicken, that hour and a half-ish to uh, reach temperature. Uh, grill right now is running about probably two and a quarter. I just added some fuel and had to bump it up a little bit. Once again, the pork butt's powering through the stall. It's about 180 degrees right now. It'll be done soon. Uh, I'll show you a picture of that afterwards. Now the hole for the leads was a, a real pleasant surprise. Did not need really to do anything to block that up. It really didn't affect the amount of smoke uh, that I got a sense that was coming out. All in all, one of the better things that you can purchase if you have a kettle, I advise Get one of these if you want to do some serious smoking. Um, today, like I said, we're 8 pounds of chicken, 9 pounds of pork. Easily on here, you could do four 10-pound pork butts, uh, 
with a vertical rib holder, who knows how many racks of ribs that you can get into this thing. Uh, looking forward to being able to do that. So if you want something that you can still have your kettle for direct grilling, but you want to be able to smoke for a party or just be able to do some low slow cooking, smoke easy. And the first one has done everything that it was supposed to do. I really enjoy it. There'll be a link in the comments to both Smokey Z site and to where I purchased this through Firecraft. Once again, if you have any comments, feel free to leave them. Feel free to like the video. Hope that this helps some of you make a decision whether or not to get the Smokey Z. Have a great day and keep on smoking.